In this video, we're going to actually conduct the logistic regression. So much of what we did earlier was prepping the data that we needed. We got this nice plot. And now we're going to use the statsmodels.formula.api library in order to fit a logistic regression to our data. And there's some information here that you can use to read up on what the logistic regression is doing. And so I'm going to create a variable called log reg mod logistic regression model. The library is nicknamed SMF. And this is up here, you can see that I've nicknamed this library SMF. And the command is SMF dot log it for logistic regression. And this is the formula. So we do the success num tilde np dot log 10 total base water volume. And so the this particular model requires that numeric success value which is why we had to create both the yes, no version and the zero one version. And then our data is merge df. And I'm going to pack the fit right onto the end of that. And so then we can print the results. We can say print log reg mod dot summary. And we can run that. And the summary is much like what we got for earlier when we did linear regression. We can see a lot of information. It even gives us this pseudo R squared value. So now technically logistic regression isn't linear. And so a correlation coefficient would equal zero, R squared would equal zero, because we can't apply those variables that, that measure to nonlinear functions. However, what this, um, what this command does in log it is it calculates a pseudo R squared, which is a way to assess goodness of fit for nonlinear functions. And so um, this can tell us that, you know, technically only about 11% of our data is being explained by this logistic regression model. So not ideal, but um, still good exercise to do. So now that we have the model ready, we can use that fitted model to make predictions. And so I'm going to create a new variable called log10x, which is just going to use our linspace command, start from four, end at eight, and add as many data points as there are in merge df. And then I'm going to create a predictions variable, which is just our log reg mod dot predict, so slightly different function. And there's this variable called exog, which is just another way to say y variable. Um, and so then it is a little bit funny. It needs to be in a dictionary and it needs to have some connection to the original data set. So I'm calling it total base water volume, which is what our original data is. And that's also why up here, I said log 10 total base water volume instead of our, instead of creating a new column for the log total waste base water volume, just so that these two values can be the same. So then we can print predictions. And so we can see here, but now we have these predictions for our 
optimized variable um, log 10x. And so then we can actually go in um, and um, visualize that data. And so we're going to start with visualizing the actual prediction. And so we're going, or actual data, sorry. So we're going to say ggplot merge df. Geom point log ten water, which is um, a variable that was created that is just the log transform of the water variable. And then our y is again going to be our success num. So we want it to be um, in our success num. So this is not how the plot is supposed to look. And I believe that it is because I forgot to do my AES statement so it didn't know what to do with x and y because that's not a normal inclusion outside of the AES statement. So let's run that again. And there we have what we actually would expect. So we've got success rate, we've got log 10 water here. And so we can see that there was some successes over here, but not as many, and a lot of successes over here, but there's still a lot of failures at this higher range too. So this is the original sort of data. And now we want to add in our logistic regression curve, which is going to give us the probability between these values. So in order to do that, we need to first create new variables that are in our data frame because ggplot doesn't like to work with non-data frame values. So we can create um, an equate or a variable log 10x, which just includes our log 10x values up here, as well as a predictions column that just contains our predictions. And then I'm gonna come up here grab the same plot, and we're just going to add to it. And so we can add geom line AES. Oop. And so here our x value is going to be log 10x. Our y value is going to be predictions. And then I'm going to add a color, blue. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, so do a size 2. And then I'm going to add on to that and add a Y label. So this is not something we have done too much, but technically what the Y value, Y axis is showing is the probability of success. So technically, although we're plotting success num, and later predictions on the y-axis, what it's actually telling us is probability. So this is a little bit more descriptive. And so here we can see this um, idealized curve as it goes up. So this is our actual data, but it's even though there's some data points over here, what the logistic regression is doing is saying that this has to fit some sort of S curve. And so it's more likely to be a failure on the low end with these being some outliers. Then it's more likely to be a success on the high end with some of these being outliers. And so this is ultimately the result of a logistic regression 
so that then we could come in and say that, you know, at log 10, 6, um, so that's of water, you know, sometimes there were failures and sometimes there were successes. But if we come up to this curve and start, whoop, start just estimating over here, it's about just over 0.25, so maybe 0.3. So there's still a 30% chance of success, so it's on the low end. Whereas once we get up to sort of this inflection point, we start to see higher chances of success for the higher amounts of water.